It should come as no surprise that wealthy countries are turning back to more fossil fuels as a result of energy restrictions and soaring fuel and power expenses. Germany is restarting coal reactors that were earlier set to close in order to counteract the slowdown in Russian gas deliveries and to restore clean energy lost owing to the suspension of nuclear power. Norway, the United Kingdom, and the United States are all increasing oil and gas output, while some European countries are even reusing gasoline oil to produce power. This has forced European leaders into racing to the doorsteps of Africa's capital cities in an effort to find replacements to the Russian natural gas. What is intriguing to know is that this sudden surge in interest in gas follows years of pressure from wealthy country governments to force African countries to stop using fossil fuels and switch to solar or wind energy instead. But as Moscow has cut off natural gas supplies to EU nations, resulting in skyrocketing energy prices, and the intensifying anticipation of a looming recession. Europe has been forced to scramble for alternate sources. The 27-nation European Union is preparing for the potential of a complete Russian cutoff, but has only been able to fill gas stocks to 90%. For the African continent, perhaps this symbolizes a sense of hope. It is however sad that it had to take the Russian-Ukraine war to tip the scales in the continent's unequal relationship with Europe and attract new gas investments despite pressure to switch to renewable energy sources. Many might argue that tactics used for war vary widely. Regardless, the world seems to be in trouble and Africa might be the hero that saves the day. Stay with fossils and experience a thriving and accelerated level of industrialization, which would benefit the world, and boost continental economic progress, or transition to renewable immediately to contribute to the planet's safety. With that being said, it is essential to know that Africa contributes to just about 2 or 3 percent of global emissions, but remains the most vulnerable. Owing to this, African leaders, like the president of Senegal, Macky Sall, want their nations to profit from these projects even as they are being discouraged from pursuing fossil fuels. Given that an estimated 600 million people in Africa lack access to power, Africans are not too enthused about exporting all of it either. It is legitimate, fair, and equitable that Africa, the continent that pollutes the least and lacks furthest behind, in the industrialization process should exploit its available resources to provide basic energy, improve the competitiveness of its economy, and achieve universal access to electricity, Saul told the UN General Assembly last month. En outre, il est essentiel que les pays membres du G5 Sahel bénéficient d'un appui conséquent. Leaders of Poland and Germany have jetted down to the continent to assess the viability of the barely completed new liquefied natural gas project, which is about 80% done, and located on the western coast of Africa. The president of Poland traveled to Senegal in September to look for gas deals, while Olaf Scholz, the German chancellor, who recently confessed to the German parliament that in order to address Europe's energy crisis and adhere to commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, cooperation with nations where new gas field development is feasible was necessary, arrived in May to pursue the same interest. The initial field near the coasts of Senegal and Mauritania is anticipated to hold roughly 425 billion cubic meters of gas, which is five times more than what gas-dependent Germany used for the entire year 2019. Nevertheless, it won't likely begin to produce until the end of 2023. In July, Italy and Algeria agreed to a $4 billion gas supply contract, a month after Egypt and the European Union and Israel reached an liquefied natural gas sales expansion pact. Additionally, Italy and Angola have a gas agreement. Analysts noted that because the July agreement was vague, it was unclear when flows would begin, despite an earlier agreement allowing Italy's largest energy company to begin production at two Algerian gas fields this week. This has triggered experts like the energy advisor for Senegal's president, Mamadou Fall Kane, to state that the war has forced a U-turn and changed the narrative. The rush of European approaches has resulted in new or accelerated energy projects, and there are talks of additional projects in the future. 
In the capitals of Africa, there is optimism that Europe's demand would result in the funding of gas facilities not only for export, but also for domestic use. In addition to Mozambique, where an EE-operated natural gas terminal is expected to start supplying gas to Europe in the coming days, Italian government ministers have traveled with executives from EMI, one of the leading energy firms in the world, to Algeria, Angola, the Republic of Congo, and Mozambique. However, with the Mozambican government, EMI is currently discussing a second terminal. Additionally, in recent weeks, representatives from the Democratic Republic of the Congo have started a global marketing campaign to alert American and European businesses to new oil and gas blocks they have put up for sale. The auction has drawn criticism from environmentalists because it includes oil blocks that cross over a gorilla sanctuary and also the delicate peatlands that store enormous amounts of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that warms the planet. Mafoud Kovi, an economist and expert in energy issues at the University of Algiers, said that while Algeria is a significant supplier, and along with Egypt accounted for 60% of the natural gas output in Africa in 2020, it is still not in the position to offset Russian gas to Europe. Tom Purdy, a gas analyst at S&P Global Commodity Insights who focuses on Europe, the Middle East and Africa, Algeria is expected to export 31.8 billion cubic meters of gas this year. According to Purdy, given how much gas Algeria consumes domestically, the key concern revolves on the level of production step-up that can be realized and the impact domestic demand could have. Cash-strapped Egypt also wants to export more natural gas to Europe and has even regulated street lighting and air conditioning in malls to conserve energy. According to official media, Egypt's Prime Minister, Mustafa Madbouli, intends to earn an extra $450 million in foreign currency each month by diverting 15% of its domestic gas use for export. Israel will now be able to transport additional gas to Europe via Egypt, which has the infrastructure to liquefy it for marine export, thanks to a new three-party agreement. According to the European Union, it will assist the two nations in boosting gas exploration and production. Despite years of planning, lofty ambitions in Nigeria have not yet produced results. In the previous year, less than 1% of the nation's enormous natural gas reserves were exported. Since 2009, plans for a 4,400-kilometer pipeline that would transport Nigerian gas to Algeria via Niger have been on hold, mostly due to the $13 billion price tag on the project. Many are concerned that even after construction, the Trans-Sahara gas pipeline will face security dangers similar to those faced by Nigeria's oil pipelines, which have frequently been attacked by militants and vandals. The immense potentials involved in some of the deals and the prospects of the continent in that regard has forced African leaders to bemoan the double standard and lament on the fact that it is taking the war in Ukraine, which is happening thousands of miles away, to give them leverage in energy deals. After all, Europe used far dirtier resources like coal for many centuries to power an era of industrialization and hegemony in addition to natural gas. Their main complaint is that despite the climate crisis and the imperative for the world to reduce its use of fossil fuels, less developed countries should be allowed to burn more gas in the upcoming years because their people deserve better living standards and greater access to dependable electricity and other necessities. But according to Africa's leaders, it is now far too expensive due to lending from Europe and other countries. Rich nations made a commitment to stop funding global development for gas projects at the COP26 climate summit last November, which may have an impact on investment in downstream energy infrastructure such as the production of fertilizer and electricity. Additionally, several Western nations are putting pressure on the World Bank and other development organizations to avoid funding any projects involving fossil fuels. Also, Norway, Sweden, and other states have proposed an outright prohibition by the end of 2024.
To put it another way, wealthy countries have determined that the current energy crisis gives them the freedom to burn any fuel they want, but poorer nations are completely barred from this option. This is perceived by many African leaders and their people as an evidence of hypocrisy, or worse in African capital cities. The presidents of Senegal, Malawi, Uganda, and Nigeria have all criticized Europe for its position. African social media is rife with wrath over what many see as a neo-colonialist plot to keep the continent's people in poverty. Rather, European politicians have frequently appeared to lecture Africans on the need to cut back on carbon dioxide emissions while offering nothing in the way of funding to support the development of green energy options, all the while continuing to produce far more carbon dioxide than Africa. Amadi Abu Zid, the African Union's Commissioner for Energy and Infrastructure, opined that only two to three months ago, Europeans were keen to lecture Africans, but are suddenly open to make a compromise. We are trying to survive, but instead, we are being infantilized, he bemoaned. Africa has never been a climate denier. We always uh, acknowledge that being also the hardest hit. The frustrations of the inhabitants of the continent is reflected in a political cartoon created by a Tanzanian artist by the name of Gato, following John Kerry's remarks last month at an environmental conference in Senegal. In the parody cartoon that characterizes his speech, Mr. Kerry is shown standing at a platform and making a statement that is reminiscent of the lecture that many African leaders believe they have been receiving from Western colleagues. He smiles as he stands next to billowing American flags and says, well, guess what, folks? Mother Nature does not measure where the emissions come from. We are all responsible for this. The U-turn flip on fossil resources by the Western nations for itself, while maintaining limitations on developing nations, has naturally enraged Africans. And so it would take more than a modest tweak of hypocritical practices to address the planet's challenges. However, a transparent cooperation, centered on respect for each other, might produce a compromise. If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen which looks at the 10 African countries with the highest gold reserves. Be sure to leave a comment, give the video a like, and subscribe to the channel for more exciting future videos.